in part three of probability, uh, we're going to talk about conditional events. Now, this is following up on the previous video of compound events, uh, where we would have two events which uh, could both occur, which was the and, or uh, either one could occur, which is the or. Uh, I'm going to review, first of all, uh, one of the uh, examples did before, which is that the probability for drawing two aces from a deck. Uh, that's, of course, the probability for ace and ace. Right? Both events have to happen. So we have the ace on the first draw, which would be 4 out of 52 you know, times, because this is the and, and uses the multiplication rule. Right? Probability of getting the ace on the second, given that the first one was also an ace. So there are three aces left out of now 51 cards. And you get your 0.45 probability. Uh, now, you'll recall in that previous video, I started to do the second one, which is uh, given no ace on the first. Well, that was actually uh, really here. Uh, because uh, what we've done here is found the probability for uh, one of uh, several potential uh, outcomes. There's, this is the probability for getting two aces. Well, what's the probability for getting one ace from two draws? Or what's the probability of getting no aces from two draws? There's a lot more possibilities, a lot more combinations that are possible here uh, with the same two draw event. So what we can do is uh, I'll show you a really nice uh, way of doing this conditional probability. And it's a tree format. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off, uh, and uh, I always start, like to start uh, with the question uh, for this tree format. Right, and really, uh, in general, the question is, how many aces will be drawn after two draws from a well-shuffled deck? Well, of course, this now is a probability uh, of multiple outcomes because you could have two aces drawn, which we already know that probability here. But we also have the one ace could be drawn or no ace could be drawn. And what we need is the probabilities uh, for each one of those possibilities. So what we're going to do is start off with uh, ace on first draw. All right. What we're going to have is, was there an ace on the first draw? That could either be yes, or it could be no. All right. No ace on the first draw. Let's get the probabilities for these. All right. The probability for getting an ace on the first draw is 4 out of 52. Uh, and the probability for not getting an ace is 48 out of 52, because there are 48 non-aces that could be drawn from. So each one of these, this is just the first draw. Now we have, how about ace on second draw? So this could be yes or no right, on the second draw. Now, and that could be true down here as well. Now, if there was no ace drawn in the first one, well, the second one, you could have a draw of an ace or still no. And the important part is that the probabilities for these will be different depending on what happens in the beginning. Right, because if an ace was drawn first, well, then how many aces are left? There's only three out of the 51. But if no ace was drawn, then that would be four out of 51. And, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, this, is the <laughs> this is the no ace. Uh, so if there are three aces uh, that are drawn, um, and 
the first was an ace, then all of the non-aces are still there. So the probability of not getting an ace on the second draw is still 48 out of 51 because all 48 non-aces are still in the deck. Now, when we come down here, right, an ace was not drawn, which means all four aces are available for the second draw from the 51 cards. But a non-ace was drawn. So there aren't 48 non-aces anymore. There's only 47 non-aces out of the 51. Now, a few things to note, things that you could check yourself. Um, if you add 4 and 48, what should you get? You should get 52 because you've, ac you've accounted for all of the possibilities. There are 51 cards here. The 3 and the 48 add up to 51. The 4 and the 47 add up to 51. Right, so you have uh, accommodated uh, all the possibilities, all the cards. So now what you can do uh, is there are paths. Right, how do you get to this point? This is probability of ace and ace. So this is ace and ace, which is going to be 4 50 seconds times 3 51st. We've already done that one, uh, which is your 0 0.0045. All right, there's your probability that we've already calculated. Now, this is the probability of ace and no ace. Ace on the first, no ace on the second. So really this is just one ace. This is going to be 4 50 seconds times 48 50 firsts, which turns out to be approximately 0 0.072. So about 7.2% chance of getting an ace on the first, but not the second. Now, if we come back over here, we, what we've done is we've traced that tree branch. We've traced that tree branch. Now we can start going down here, tracing this branch. All right, we're going to get all the possible paths. So this is the probability of no ace, because that's what you know, this first outcome was, and ace. Well, no ace was 48, 50 seconds. Uh, and ace on the second is 4, 50 firsts. Notice that 52 and 51 are in the denominator. 4 and 48 are both in the numerator. You're going to get the same number here. So, and that makes intuitive sense that you should have really the same probability of drawing one ace. It doesn't really make too much difference whether it happens first or second. It's going to be the same probability. And then we are going to have this path, the no ace, the no ace. So probability, no ace, and no ace is equal to... 48 50 seconds times 47 50 firsts, which is equal to 0.851. So 85% chance you're not going to get any aces. Uh, and if you add up all four of these prob probabilities, this is your sample space. So it should within a little round off error, equal one. Uh, and if you check it, uh, it does. And what I've done here is I've put in the relative frequencies in decimal form uh, of all the intermediate numbers. Uh, and you can see that, of course, uh, every sort of column 
uh, has to add up to 100%. So this, these two add up to one. Uh, these two, and I don't know if I said column, I shouldn't have, uh, each branch has to add up to 100%. So this divides these two add up to 100%, and these two add up to 100%, and then you know all four of these actually add up to 100%. Uh, now, with all of uh, this detail, we can start really asking quite a lot of questions, uh, such as, uh, you know, a simple one, uh, what's the probability of simply ace on the first? Well, we know that's right here. That's 0 0.0769. A uh, little bit more interesting is what's the probability of ace on the second draw. All right, well, here's the second draw over here. Uh, and so what we can do is uh, we can say the probability for getting an ace on the second draw, now in this condition, ace first draw, ace second draw is going to be the point zero four five. Probability of getting an ace on the second draw through this condition, all right, no ace and then ace, is 0 0.072. So it's going to be the sum of those, which is going to be 0 0.0765. A little over seven, seven and a half percent. So uh, now from there, notice that we're adding both probabilities uh, from both conditions of the first draw. Because this doesn't really talk about the first draw at all, right? It's just, you know, what's the probability of getting an ace on the second draw? So we end up combining what happens if the ace is drawn on the first draw or when it's not drawn on the first draw. Right? And then we can just add those together. Uh, and it's just focusing on the second draw. Uh, we know nothing actually about the, the first draw it, or it combines really both. Um, so now uh, what we can do is start talking about uh, some ors. How about uh, ace uh, on first uh, or ace on second. So uh, we can approach this in a couple ways. Uh, going back to what we did uh, in the last video, uh, we could go back and say, well, our formula would be, of course, uh, probability for ace in the first draw plus probability of ace the second draw minus probability ace on the second oops ace on the second draw given uh, ace on first, right? Again, that's the Venn diagram, right? Where we have to not count that space twice. So this probability of ace on the first, right? We have right here. That's our point zero seven six nine. Probability of getting on the se second. We just calculate above. And probability for getting ace on the second given ace on the first, well, given ace on the first, ace on the second is our point zero zero four five. Uh, and if we do that math out, we get about 14, almost 15 percent chance. So now, uh, what's uh, even more interesting uh, is these 
orange questions uh, are the kind of going forwards ones. Uh, we can actually work this uh, backwards a little bit, uh, which is going to look like this. Hold on. Had to clear things out a little bit to make some space. But here's the backwards working one. Right? What's the probability of getting an ace on the first draw given what happened on the second draw? So one way of thinking about this is you draw a card, don't look at it, and keep it face down. <clears throat> draw a second card, and it turns out to be an ace. Well, what's the probability that that first card is also an ace? That's really what we're asking here, uh, which means we're, we're given information at this end of the tree and we're asked for our answer is actually at this end of the tree, which is, a little, which is backwards, which is using the tree backwards. Uh, and what you have to do is uh, work with it a little diff uh, differently. You have to kind of go back to that definition of relative frequency uh, in a lot of ways. So uh, let's I'll write it out for you first which hopefully is familiar. Uh, I've used a slightly different vocabulary, outcomes of interest. I think I used favorable outcomes or uh, successful outcomes. Um, we use outcomes of interest. Total number of outcomes, that's our relative frequency. Well, we can apply that to this problem uh, and it would look kind of like this. Here's what it looks like uh, for this question, probability of interest over probability of possible outcomes. It's the same concept. Now, what's our probability of interest? Well, uh, what outcome of interest do we have? We have, uh, we know we have an ace on the second, right? Give an ace on the second. So we're asked about uh, probability of ace on the first, right? So we have an ace on the first. We know ace on the second. This is our uh, probability of interest, which is our 0.0045. Right. So that's going to be on top. Now, uh, total possible uh, uh, prob probabilities. All right. We know we have an ace on the second. That's given. Well, that could also be down here as well. Well, this is ace on the second. Right. And well, we don't have an ace on the first, uh, but in the beginning we don't know what the first one is. Right? So these are our two possible outcomes that have an ace on the second. So we're actually going to have those two uh, in our denominator. 0 0.0045 plus 0 0.072. And that turns out to be 0 0.0 Five nine. All right, so uh, almost six percent uh, probability that, given an ace on the second, that the first is also an ace. Again, that situation where you draw the first card and leave it face down, second card is an ace. You have about a six percent chance that that first card is also an ace. Now. Talking about drawing aces from card deck is a uh, good academic exercise. I'd actually like to go through another example, which is a little bit more uh, real world. Uh, this example, uh, let me write it out for you. Uh, this example is about HIV testing in the US. A few beginning uh, givens, right? We're gonna assume that 0.2% uh, of the U.S. population is actually HIV positive. Uh, I, I was given this example. I think the numbers uh, are relatively accurate, uh, at least at one point. Uh, I'm not sure how up to date they are. Uh, now, of those who are actually HIV negative, 1.5% will actually test positive. These are the, the, this is the false positive rate. And then of those who are actually positive, 0.3% will test negative. These are the false negative results. All right, whenever you do medical testing, no medical test is 100% uh, 
uh, accurate. There's always false positives. There's always false negatives. Um, it's just what percentage, right? And hopefully those percentages are quite low. Uh, but uh, there's a question which needs to be asked, uh, and that is if you test positive, are you HIV positive? That's really the crucial question. Uh, let me write that up. Because certainly um, there's a possibility that it could be a, a false positive. Uh, but that possibility uh, is conditioned upon whether you are actually positive or negative. And so that's where the condition tree uh, will come in. All right, so in our first branch, we have something like this. Um, we will have whether you are actually positive, uh, and we're assuming that 0.2% is actually positive. So if you're actually negative, that would be the balance. 99.8% are actually negative. Now, if you uh, are positive, will you test uh, positive? Right. So a positive test uh, will be um, from this 0.3% uh, statistic because we're actually positive, so we're on this branch. Uh, and we'll 0.3% will test negative. Uh, so to get the positive will be the balance of this. So this is going to be 0.997. And then, of course, if you are actually positive, you will test negative 0.3%. So that's the 0 0.003. Now, if you are actually negative, that's up here, 1.5% will test positive. So this is going to be 0 0.015. And of course, the balance will be 0.985 for testing negative when you actually are negative. So now we can get these probabilities right, where we have 0 0.002 times 0.997. Here we have 0 0.002, 0 0.003, uh, and I will fill this in for you. And there are all the relative frequencies. We've got some very small ones, I mean, very uh, small probabilities um, are kicking around. But now let's go back to our original question. If you test positive, are you positive? Uh, to write this out more symbolically, so we have uh, P uh, actually positive, Uh, given test positive. All right, equals what? What's that probability? So if you test, right, if you test positive, are you actually positive? So notice that what we're given is over here. And what we're asked for is back over here. So this is a backwards working probability question. So we're going to have to do that relative frequency weighted average kind of uh, method uh, that we've used. So what we should do is uh, make the ratio of actual positives over total positives. All right, which includes the false positives. So we have, 
the actual positives uh, are the point zero zero one nine nine four. All right, that's this number up here. The actual positives, uh, a tested positive. Uh, and then we have the total, which includes that above one, uh, plus the point zero one four nine seven, which are these positives. Because, you know, both of these groups have tested positive. So that's your total pool, but only these are actually positive. So we're going to find the ratio of those two. Uh, and it turns out that this is 0.1175 or 11.75%. Uh, that test positive are actually positive. That actually seems like an incredibly low result. Right. Only 11%, almost 12%, that test positive actually are positive. Seems like a terrible test. If you test positive, what does that mean? It doesn't really mean too much because only 11%, 11 or 12% that test positive are actually positive. But let's ask another question. Uh, and I'm going to clear some more space up above. All right, now that we have a little bit more space. Uh, the next question would be, uh, what's the probability of being actually positive given that you tested negative now? Right. So that would be the false negative. Um, so, you know, you have this test negative, but you're actually positive. Uh, we set up the same kind of ratio. Uh, we have a uh, number of false negatives over the total number of negative results. Total number of negatives. We have our point zero 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 six which is our you know actually positive but uh, tested negative uh, and then how many tested negative well this group and this group down here so the denominator is going to have that plus uh, 0 0.89303 or 98303. <laughs> uh, and this turns out to be 0 0.00000061. An incredibly small probability. Uh, I mean, it's point zero 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 six one percent incredibly small so what's that telling you about if you test negative are you likely if you test negative to actually be positive well no you're actually very unlikely so and this is somewhat typical of uh, many tests it doesn't necessarily go in this way all the time but um, it's a really good test if you test negative. If you test negative, you're actually very sure uh, that you're negative. Because right? if you're, the probability of testing negative and actually being positive is so low. So it's very good if you come up negative. If it comes up positive, you're actually not sure. Um, you should not base any kind of uh, decision on the positive test. What you should do is retest. So negative test is good. Positive test simply means you need to retest uh, because it really doesn't tell you much because um, so few that, posi that test positive actually are positive. So that's a very interesting uh, result of this. Uh, and you know, some doctors may not 
know the, the probability, the statistics of this, uh, and if you get back a positive, think it's positive. Well, not necessarily. It depends on how these probabilities play out.